So we've transformed the kitchen island into a game show quiz desk for global desserts for my flat. Are all of Ben's guests given a paddle? <laughs> I just... <laughs> so take Not one, very rigid, is it, Take though? one, pass it on. <laughs> <laughs> So four different sweet things from around the world. All you've got to do is guess where they're from. Lift the cloche. Mary? Really? Yeah. Swing. Ooh. Okay. they've got stuff in them. No, they haven't, have they? They have, look, they're stuffed. Look, because they're really... You know, they, they are, they're weighty. They're not light and fluffy. Should we just go in? Describe what you're eating, what you're tasting, and then, of course, where in the world do you think it's from? Light and fluffy, slightly sweetened bread. But what's in the middle? Coconut. Oh, yeah. And maybe, is it almondy as well? A dense slab of coconut. Mm. So it's bound um, together in something sticky and sweet. It's absolutely delicious. It's kind of like, it's giving me almond croissant mm. filling. So it's fresh shaved coconut or grated desiccated coconut. So it's mm. basically stewed down in uh, muscovado mm. sugar or sugared water until it becomes really sticky and pasty. So it's just that coconut and sugar that then forms a filling inside of a uh, slightly sweetened dough. Are they milk buns? Yes, milk buns, but they're basically individually rolled out that. and then basically you put a dollop in the middle, fold it round and bake. They are traditionally from Honduras. Oh. And there, they're considered a breakfast or a snack item. But that's one country that you won't need to put down because these are not from there. The dish has migrated to this new place and there they're more considered dessert. Mm. Okay. It'd be lovely one of those. <laughs> if you don't mind. It's like a coffee. No. <laughs> How are they filled? So it's like, they, a, it's they, like they, a coconut they... paste. Not this similar to a cooked frangipan. You're kind of close with the almond mm. uh, sort of mm. analogy, although that would usually sort of have egg in it, to, which is what sets it. Yeah. In this instance, it's just... They're, they're, they're cooked with that in it, rather than filled afterwards. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm. You're currently in Honduras. That is great. I'm in Honduras now. During sun celebrations, they're actually gifted as, like, welcome presents as well. Just need one country from you. Lock in an answer. Remember, if you get it spot on, there's three points up for grabs. However, if you both get it wrong, then whoever is closest, based on centroids, will take a point. Mm. That's it. No more clues. This is hard. I could tell you what they're called. You could. Are you going you to? Could. Panda Coco. Coconut bread. Okay, then you've both scribbled an answer. Mm -hmm. Turn around your boards in three, two, one. Barbados. Grenada. Oh, both gone with similar logic. What is that logic? They have coconuts. But also there's there's a mm. well-known Rihanna song who is from Barbados called Pondy Replay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not far off, Candy Coco. I can't beat that logic. <laughs> I, really I mean, we can all beat that logic, but fair play. <laughs> I really want you to be right for that alone. Grenada. Yeah. Again, it, it's not travelling too far from Honduras. Um, and it feels like a, a sweet treat I can imagine being shared at a celebration. So the South American versions weren't necessarily always quite as sweet and sometimes were even served with stews. It was only when it moved across to the new place based on a bilateral uh, relationship that they shared. So political economic uh, relationship. In the 1600s, although the bilateral relationship is much more recent, Philippines. Ho, ho, ho. Miles off. I was, thinking, <laughs> I was thinking because of the milk bread, yeah, that okay. side of the world. Yeah. But then as soon as you told me what it was called, mm. that threw Made me no off. Made no sense. Too. So Spanish influence in the Philippines. Right. Honduras and the Philippines still have an amazing bilateral, is the, the term they use, but bilateral relationship. Um, and there's a lot of trade between the two. One of those trades. That's a good trade. Bread. I feel like we've had more Filipino dishes in this format than any other, yeah. any other country, but every time they're so different. One of us is closer. I got zero last time I went up against Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> there are versions of this bread that instead of coconut, or as well as coconut, might also have pandan or ube, but I thought that might have given away oh, too yeah. much. One of you is 52 miles closer than the other person. You're both well over 10,000 miles away. Mike takes a point. Yeah, One point, really? we're 10,632 well miles. Barry, your grenade is 10,684 miles away. You've earned that point for Rihanna Thank purposes. you, Rihanna. <laughs> One point to Mike. 
lots of buns for the rest of us, and we move on to round two. Number two, lift away. Whoa! Whoa. These light cheese. You know just by looking at these that they're going to taste amazing. Looks like they're sitting in a in a syrup. Yeah. Rose pistachio saffron. Saffron. Oh my goodness. Yeah, are they? What are you expecting from them don't before know. you try them? I, I think they might be spongy and moist because of all the syrup. They're exactly like that. They're like I a spongy know. halloumi. Okay, speaking. Comment down below if you already know where these are from. They are beloved across this country. Despite being drenched in that syrup, they're still really dry. Like, they kind of like, they chew for ages and they kind of then fall to bits. The flavour is all in the syrup and what's around it. They are just fantastic sponges. Yeah, but it's like eating a little sponge. Mm. Like, in terms of texture, they absorb a lot of that syrup. It tastes really nice. They are <laughs> a dry... <laughs> They are a little sponge. We always say like eating a uh, drenched cake, a cake worth of sponge, but this is more sponge than cake. Yeah, it's not, like a, not a cake no. sponge, it's like a sponge sponge. That's amazing, what's it made of? This is made from cheese, essentially. Coagulated ah. milk, so basically it's then put through a muslin cloth and the, the solids are then kneaded and then simmered in a sugar syrup. So that is the squeaky cheese that you mentioned. Like the curd type. It has a feel. similar kind of basis that is called chenna. Oh my god. But that, like you expect this to be absolutely soaked, but it's, it's not. It's dry again. It's really dry. And then obviously the syrup can be flavoured with any number of things. You might have recognised a lot of them in there, mm. sort of the rose and the saffron, but also potentially some spices like cardamom. It's understood that the method, i.e. the technique of making these, was introduced to the country by the Portuguese. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm but very much associated with this country now. Barry, scribble something down. Mike, I need you to do the same. Absolutely fascinating dish. You confident? As confident as you are. I feel confident because I feel like I've had the flavour profiles before, not that exact cheese. Let's see how confident. Flip round the boards in three, two, one. UEA. UAE. United Arab Emirates. You're right. UEA. <laughs> <laughs> Just invented uh, a country. There we go. UEA. No. <laughs> You're both either equally correct or wrong. What was your logic? This is very similar to the kanafa or the kanafa yeah. that we had when we were in Dubai, which is a uh, syrup soaked cheese mm. stranded thing with pastry and it's all sort of baked in this giant circular pan. It's absolutely delicious. Yeah. I'm exactly the same. I didn't go to Dubai, but I made this, that same thing at Kanafa with James. Yeah, you remade it, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. I know the logic, that cheese in the sweet dish with similar profiles. However, you are both over 1,600 miles away. How are we that far away? Now commonly associated with West Bengal, but we are talking India. What? The country. Ross Guller and it is absolutely delicious, but it was the Portuguese influence gotcha. that brought it through. And then if you look at sort of the rose petals, the saffron, the pistachio, the same kind of garnish you might find on a biryani or rice yeah. dishes as yep. well. Yeah. Uh, Dating back to the 12th century, a long, long time ago. Hey, hey. This is tough. Nothing ventured, this nothing gained. Game. The Portuguese took a lot to India, including the Vindaloo. Low scoring game. Low scoring game. You are both equally right and wrong, 1,619 miles away. So I'm gonna give you both a point. Mike, oh. you take two points, Barry one. Number three, something sweet, but where is it from? Go for it. Ooh. Oh, it's, it looks fudgy. Very sticky. Ooh, harder than fudge. Almonds on the top, and I imagine throughout. Okay. Ah, oh, this is really familiar. I've had something like that before. Okay, it looks wet, but as soon as you bite into it, it goes dry. But then as soon as it's in your mouth... It goes wet again. It goes to a pace. And it's nutty and sweet and almost yeah. like a burnt sugar, sugar profile. Yeah. yeah, it's an odd sensation mm. in that it's you really kind of nice. bite into it slowly, but it just falls. Really sweet and nutty. Like, that is delicious. It goes chalky, then creamy. 
Yeah. Absolutely delicious. That is awesome. Often gifted around the festive season, so at Christmas, but also loved all year round. And whilst there are versions that might have other flavourings in it, cinnamon, sometimes lemon zest, uh, this is just a fairly classic one. What's the recipe, Emma? So it really is just a trio of ingredients. So you've got almonds, sugar, or honey, sometimes both, and then egg whites. Okay. And it's almost like nougat yeah. in the way that it's made. Mm. Yeah, it looks uh, like But it, interesting, but... it has a texture not dissimilar to halva, which is made with sesame paste. Yeah, that's what seeds. I was thinking of. And it's a somewhere cross between kind of oh. nougat, halva, and just, in all honesty, the richness of the Marcona almonds, almost just like a square of nut butter. It's that rich. One of those three ingredients, almonds, they are Marcona almonds, and they need a specific climate and area and, and kind of terroir to grow, but they are known for their being really sort of high in rich oils, which is what makes this a delicious dessert. And uh, tell us more about the uh, specific climate that's required. <laughs> mm, that really useful. So the origins date back to Arabic culture and were thought to go back as far as the 8th century. The confectionery is believed to have originated, I'm going to have to say this, in an ancient town called Sexona. Just because it starts with sex. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> but Sexona is now Hihona. This means, it means a lot, doesn't it, today? You can tell. No, it does. You, you were scarred by the last battle, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, it, it, it got yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> so this delicious sweet, where do you think it's from? Flip around the boards. Greece. Italy. I thought Italy, I thought French. But then when you're talking about mm. the orange, origins, I did immediately think Turkey. But then I was trying to think of other ancient civilizations yeah. that have been around a while. Well, I thought Turkey was too obvious, but I think I've gone wrong. I feel like I've had this on holiday in a little Italian confectionery shop. Mm. It feels Italian with the egg whites yeah. and the almonds, but then also like French you've, egg whites. You've both almonds. picked cuisines that love honey and almonds which is, you know, two of the ingredients here with the egg whites Why'd you well. do a little heart? What's wrong with you? That's really sweet. I miss Italy. Oh, and also you just had a sweet tooth going he, on. He says Sexona, they got me in the mood. <laughs> <laughs> Sexona, now Hihona. The dish is called Turon de Hihona. Oh, damn, it's Spanish, isn't it? It's on the east coast of Spain. Oh. Spanish. Remember, Arabic cultures reigned Spain for some time. Yeah. That's Mainly where the, the influence <laughs> of the sweet and confectionery making came from. Yeah. And the almonds are specific to that area, gotcha. Marcona. Which means that Barry is slightly closer with 853 miles and takes a point. You both have two points each, which means it's level pegging as we go into our last cloche. We've had buns, paddles and pegging. <laughs> and we've been in his flat for 50 minutes. <laughs> Last one, lift the cloche. Here you go. It's all to play for. Oh, wow, that looks great. A fascinating dish. What do you make of it? It looks really bad for me. It's a spongy, oh, I can oh. see what it's made of. Is oh. it made of figs? Oh my goodness. There we go. Yeah. Is that cream? Often served swimming in cream, so it oh is just God. cream. Okay, so it's got, it's figs. It's not, it's not overly sweet at all. It's actually more bitter. That's amazing. Sweet. What the heck are you? It's got the consistency of a really undercooked fudgy brownie. Yeah. It tastes of figs. It's got bitterness, figs. but it's not massively sweet. It's not fig. Is it date? I don't think it's sweet. It actually, it's delicious, but it doesn't taste that oh. much. Oh, right at the end. There is such a distinct flavour yeah. there. But it's difficult to pinpoint because it's not something we typically put in dessert. Yeah, yeah. Right at the end. Ah, oh, what is that? Malted. It's malt. Rye. Rye, that's rye bread. It's well, it's really, got rye it's, flakes it's, and yeah, rye flour. Yeah, yeah I guess rye really, it's so, malt. really soggy. It's the flavour of malt. That's what it is. Really soggy rye bread. Cooked out with water, some orange and molasses. Just molasses, okay. As a sweetness. Orange, so, gotcha. Molasses, orange well. a little bit of orange, uh, but the predominant flavour there is that malted flavour. Some of these variations have dried fruit, not the one we've made today. So how is this made? Pretty difficult to get hold of in the UK, but those are rye flakes. They are then basically 
partially hydrated and then cooked in uh, water with molasses and orange. Right. Cooked out slowly, slowly, slowly. Like you don't want to get it too hot. You don't want to get too cold. People basically say it's, it's cross between Ooh. porridge and a pudding. And then what you, you just And then it can either it. be kept and stored. Some recipes then go on to bake it, depending on how long you cook it for. But that essentially just sets up once it's been mm. kept at a certain temperature, stirred regularly and got the right hydration it then sets up, which is why you said it's really gooey, like an undercooked brownie. Yeah, yeah. It's got that essence Ooh. to it. I feel like you could add so many different flavours to that as well. As a vehicle, it's really, it's a very satisfying eat. It's very mm -hmm. sticky. Yeah. It's gooey. It's de everything you want from a good chocolate brownie without yeah. the chocolate. So when you malt something, what, apart from shedding your fur, what is the process to make that malt as well? <laughs> Cooking it to release the sugars but not so much that you get rid of the starch. Which is so, in, in the brewing process, you take sweet. all the grain, whether it's barley or rye or whatever, and you heat it to release all the sugars, so oh, that you've still got something to feed on, but you've still got the starch, which is why beer is carby. Mm. And if I didn't live in Britain, this would strike me as a very British pudding. Mm. Yeah, so we have a big beer. brewing culture. And once it's in the brewing industry, it then becomes wort, doesn't it? Which is, yeah. sounds disgusting, but it's spelled with an O, not an A. Yeah. One last clue, we think um, the first mention of it scribbled down was um, in a work written in 16th century, but it referred to it being around since the 13th century. Very few people make it at home, so we understand. Therefore, most of them are bought, so it tends to be a product that you just buy rather than make at home, and is loved around Easter. Right, boys, what you got? Three, two, one. Check you were level out. pegging up until that point. <sighs> I was gonna go for Belgium. Belgium. My, my logic was, I, when I saw it, I was thinking straight away like Scandinavia. But then as we ate it and with the, the beer links, Belgium and then the kind of Christian roots as well. I did similarly. Uh, I was thinking uh, Germany to start off with and then also parts of Scandinavia, but then know that there's not a huge religious or ca mm. Catholic influence on those countries and then moved more east to where they're a little bit more prominent. The dish is called Mammy. <laughs> Not from either of those countries. But it's close, isn't it? But you both mentioned Scandinavia, Finland. Finland! I was gonna write oh, Finland! Finish. A perfect one to finish on because it is just deliciously different to anything yeah. that we've had or made before. Yeah, he's gotta be close. Who's right? closest? And what's crazy with this it's game awesome. is it's all about centroids. So it is from the centroid yeah. of Finland to the centroid of either of your countries. No. One of you is 1,126 miles away. Yeah. One of you is 924 miles away. And the winner of this point, and therefore the entire episode today, is Mike. Oh, Good. Well done. Ooh. Low scoring game, but delicious dessert. Yeah, really delicious. That's fantastic. Nobody got one spot on here in the, I was going to say studio, in my flat today, <laughs> but comment down below. Uh, did you? Did you get any of those spot on? 